right, I want to give you an overview of my rabbitry. I did a video a little while ago and I wanted to give you an update uh, and I want to give you some better views. But the first thing I did is you need to have a nursery. I like to keep, uh, and we're going to be doing this with roosters and their chickens and everything making this noise. They like to, they like to talk when I'm talking. I don't know why, but uh, anyways, what I did is I used a dog kennel. These things, actually six by ten. And I built two uh, rabbit hutches, uh, five feet long. And uh, each rabbit hutch has two sections to it. So you end up with about uh, two and a half feet uh, by three feet. It's three feet wide, two feet tall, and uh, I should say uh, three feet deep, two and a half feet wide and two feet tall. And I made it to where the top has a hinge where it opens up and then there's a front door. So there's two front doors that open. And in these uh, rabbit hutches, I use the larger uh, metal feeders and we put the pellets in, but then we use rubber bowls. We also uh, will use the bottles because it seems like the babies like to use the bottles for some reason. So we put those on also. I also have these raised up. You can see they're about two feet off the ground. And then I put these uh, cement mixing trays that you can get from Home Depot where it can catch the uh, excess hay and the poo and everything. And then we just, you know, drag them outside and we dump them down onto the ground over here. But this is, uh, this is a really nice thing. And during the winter, I wrap it with uh, tarps so it blocks the wind. I just dropped this one tarp down in front here. And then I also have electric heat lamps. These are 250 watt electric heat lamps that can heat, heat these up very nicely. The metal roof construction is very simple. You can just take like two by fours, running them across, and then you just take metal roofing. And you can see I just use a heavy gauge wire, tie it onto the top. And you just wanna make sure you give yourself enough slant so the water runs off. So I usually make the uh, make the thing have a little tilt to it and on these because i didn't actually use uh, two by fours i used some rough sawn rough sawn lumber i had to put some conduit in here to keep it from sagging and that gave it plenty of support and it also gave me something to hook my wires up onto and everything so this ends up being a, a really good way to do it so i built a pretty extensive uh, rabbitry but it's a nice compact design and there's a couple features about this that make it uh, really nice um, one um, I have a sloped property and so I built a deck that my rabbit hutches are inserted in so that when they pee and poop it all just drops down underneath and then the chicken scratch and before I had chickens I used to have a major gnat problem from the bugs that would get into the poo down below but now that the chicken scratch we don't have a bug problem at all it's amazing how these uh, chickens and rabbits are kind of a symbiotic relationship. But these hutches are very simple to build. Um, I've built mine to where they're eight feet long, three feet deep, and uh, two feet tall. And then I just use uh, plywood dividers, and you can divide this in half, you can divide it into thirds, you can divide it into quarters. It's very easy to do. And I use the uh, welded wire um, on the inside and so the rabbits can't chew any, on anything. The only problem I've had is they'll chew on to the plywood dividers. So I think in the future I'm going to put the welded wire on each side of the uh, plywood so that they don't chew that. And then I wrap plastic around the outside to knock down the wind so you can see that. And on the back of you know one side so it's only open on the front. Now, I did not use UV resistant uh, plastic or anything because this stuff's super cheap, but uh, next time around I may do that because you can see this plastic's uh, starting to get beat up a little bit, so I got to get a replacement for the side that's facing the sun. Now, one of the things you have to plan for, uh, like how many does you want to have and how many males. Right now I have uh, three bucks and about... Uh, six females and I'm in the process now of uh, starting to replace some of my older uh, does and I'm probably gonna have to do the same thing with some of the bucks but one of the things you ought to consider rather than just getting your 
uh, starting rabbits from just you know one location now these are babies that I just relocated out here mama says um give me a break but anyways uh, you may want to consider getting your initial breeding stock from different places and that's what I've done I started with uh, rabbits from one location he was getting out of the business and then I found somebody who was quite a ways away and picked up some more breeding stock and I'm trying to focus primarily on the New Zealand whites right now I, I do have a uh, couple other rabbits males so like I've got a black New Zealand rabbit This is the primary one I breed with. This is a New Zealand white. If I mate the brown with the black rabbit, I end up with different colors, which is kind of neat. So here's some examples. You end up with some grays, blacks, browns. That's, it's always nice to have some variety. Now mine are primarily um, meat rabbits. That's what I'm, I don't really give any away. I use them for barter or whatever. But I wanted to point out that I use, when they move out here to the grow out pens, I use these chicken feeders. So they're seven pound and 10 pound feeders and these work fantastic for the rabbits. Uh, we got a lot less waste and it lasts a lot longer and then I just use these rubber bowls and those work great in the winter time because when it ices over, you can dump it out, and put fresh water, you're good to go. But uh, these are, these are ready to be processed right here, these two. These are beautiful rabbits. They're super easy to process and they're fantastic meat. I had been using Timothy grass from uh, Tractor Supply. It was a grab and go bag, but it was pretty expensive. It was $20 for a pretty heavy bag. It's a, a compressed bale. But I found a local source now that I can get uh, orchard grass. And I've been getting bales of orchard grass for like $6. They're not the compressed bales, but they're essentially the same size, and I have a storage location on my property where I can put these. And the rabbits seem to be doing just very well. Okay, I use Producer's Pride for my uh, rabbit feed. Now, there are several different versions of uh, rabbit feed they have at like Tractor Supply, and a lot of them actually cost more, but this particular feed has virtually identical ingredients, and I haven't seen the need to try to spend more for something that's not giving me any better results. Now, some people might ask, you know, what do you do for the mating process? Well, normally what I do is I will... Jeez, that rooster is driving me crazy. I'll just stick the female in here and walk away. Sometimes I'll remove the water container and I'll leave her in here for a couple hours and then I come back. I usually watch for the first few minutes because you'll see the uh, rabbit have a successful mate. There you go, that's a proper mating right there. Now another thing that I did is uh, we'd originally built a structure over the top of our rabbits where I just had shade cloth, but uh, especially in the winter time, rabbits do not like to get wet and when it's cold you'll kill your rabbits so we decided to go ahead and just put a metal roof get some trusses trusses are not expensive at all and we were able to put this up in a basically a day it didn't take that long but this is a probably the only way that i would ever do this because this is as simple as it gets there's one more feature about uh, my structure is because of it's a being a slope you know all the rabbit poo and everything with the chicken scratching it ends up uh, being scratched down into a catch basin that i created so this area down here is all rabbit poo that is unbelievable fertilizer i grew um, sweet potatoes the size of softballs or great large grapefruits like what we have in florida and just using rabbit poo i just uh, use my rototiller a rotor tilled out some channels, just took buckets of this rabbit poo, ran it in the channels, and then planted my sweet potatoes in that. They came out fantastic. I didn't even add any other fertilizers or anything. So you can do the same thing with potatoes. You can do the same thing. In fact, all my raised beds in the front, I just use rabbit manure. It's a very low nitrogen 
Um, it doesn't work well for like onions except for getting them started. You need some high nitrogen for the bulbing process, but for everything else, this is, uh, this is unbelievable. So you use everything. Now another thing I did is uh, we added power this year, so I have a fan during the summer to provide some amount of cooling. I also added uh, some string LED lights and I also have some floodlights here. And I did put a bug zapper and again, we don't seem, I mean, I'm on the edge of woods here, so we do get a bunch of bugs just from the woods, but uh, it seems like just with the chicken scratching underneath and uh, having the bug zapper, we really don't have any issues here. The chickens and the rabbits get along just fine. I see them all the time where the chickens will be sitting outside the cage and a rabbit's laying right next to them. But we get tons of eggs from our chickens. I just have too, too many roosters right now. I gotta thin the herd a little bit. I need to find a home. So I've got three does here that should be within about a week of having babies. And I just noticed this morning, this one started doing the mouthing behavior. It was grabbing a full mouth of hay. And uh, so I had to put an, a box in there. So what I do is I usually just go ahead and throw some of the uh, grass in there first and then I give her plenty for her to be able to set it up the way she wants. And it's just uh, part of the instincts to do this. I interrupted her by putting the box in there, but now she's going to be super happy. This is a really good sign that she's uh, getting close. So, you know, this is probably within, I don't know, sometimes when they get this behavior, they have like the babies the same day, and other times it's like four days beforehand. But she'll feel, it's almost like a little Groucho March, Marx thing. <coughs> it's kind of funny. But this is a uh, nesting behavior. Now, what I may end up doing is move her up into the nursery because we're going to be coming into some colder weather here soon. But, uh... It's not gonna be terribly cold, so I may end up just using a heating lamp here. But she'll end up uh, fluffing up her box, and I may end up coming down a little bit later and throw some more uh, grass in there. This is orchard grass and timothy grass, but sometimes people use timothy hay, but I find that the, uh, the rabbits just really prefer the grass. Oh yeah, see that pocket she made right there? That's beautiful. But she'll make it the way she wants. She gets enough fluff and everything in there. These are my two beautiful babies here. So things you need to know about uh, rabbits. <clears throat> it's a 29 to 34 day gestation period. So after you get the rabbits uh, impregnated, you can expect uh, roughly 30 days before they'll have their kits. And then it's about three months before they're five pounds. And that's when I start processing is right at three months. You don't necessarily need to separate the males or females in that time, but you can expect to have a couple pregnant ones. But if you're processing them, it doesn't matter. There'll just be, a, you know, you'll just see early stages of a pregnancy. But if you're going to keep like any of the does, you need to separate them probably about two months old. Because when they have uh, kits at very young age, from what I've read, it, it really uh, messes up their litter size down the road. So you want to wait until they're probably about, uh, I'd say, five, six months old before you uh, mate them to have the best size kits. Size litter, I should say. In the spring, oh man, I'm telling you right now, when I, uh, like right now, these things will be ready March. So when I have uh, like my March, April, May time period, these uh, rabbits during this time period, they're, uh, they'll have as many as 10 babies. So you end up with a huge quantity. Last year I had 70 uh, kits that I ended up having to uh, grow all the way out and boy, did they eat me out of house and home. So I was busy processing over, over like a two month period. But she's gonna be busy for a while. The best thing to do is get yourself a whiteboard and uh, keep track of, you know, like when you impregnated your rabbits and when you're when they're born, 
how many for each one of them that kind of thing and what I do is I'll keep them in this area for about a month after they're born and then I move them to these larger grow out pens like over there that's that's like the last month they'll be over there and I can keep about seven in each each half excuse me I remate the dough at six weeks after birth and separate her from the kits at eight weeks. These dang chickens. Get out of here. Go, get, get, go on, go on. They like to get in my Timothy grass over here. They think they're gonna lay eggs in there. No, no, no. I'm trying to do a video. Y'all are screwing things up. <clears throat> Animals. I have one more mama over here. This is from my original batch. She's a brown one, and I mate her with the black rabbit, and I get all kinds of cool colors, kind of like in here. Get the gray and the white. Okay, it's a good thing I'm paying attention because... Uh, She's got the same uh, mothering instinct here, so I got to get her a nesting box. She's doing the Gracho Marks thing. All right, so let me go ahead and get her a nesting box set up. It's funny, it always uh, messes them up when I see what they're doing, but this is what you got to do. You got to pay attention. Should have looked at the whiteboard. Probably should have been out here last night. Got old Groucho Marks. I must have mated these like really close together. I try to do two at a time. And then I'll wait a week and then I'll do two more. This is a very interesting behavior. This is a kind of one of my senior moms. She's a uh, She's a champion. It's amazing she can put so much in her mouth. Nature in action, folks. <clears throat> Still waiting for some babies. She's got a fantastic little nest here. You see how she's got a pouch in the back? And that's what this one has too. Look at the pouch back there. I'm waiting for some babies. Can I have some babies? Any day now. Are you waiting for Christmas day to have some babies? So we have a development. It looks like my white rabbit had her babies. This is fantastic. So we'll give it a couple days and then I'll pull the fluff back because we got to get a count and everything. But uh, yep, that's fantastic. So I got to get her some food. She's going to be super hungry. This one over here hasn't had hers yet, but this is going to look at that beautiful pocket in the back though. She's a champion mama too. She does a fantastic job. So anyways, things are moving along. Thought I'd get a video to show you how fast these suckers are growing. They are doing really well. They're filling up this box. They're going to be out of here pretty soon. So we got four good sized ones in here. Put them back. It's funny when you look at the difference between the two. This mama doesn't pull any hair out for her baby. She only had one, which is really unusual, but some of these rabbits are getting a little older, so I'm uh, gonna be start doing a rotation here. But uh, one black baby, she was mated with a, a black New Zealand rabbit. And so you get some really interesting colors. These are my favorites though. These white ones, they put out fantastically large rabbits excellent for meat but uh, we've had her for quite a while and I decided to uh, just kind of make her as long as we could but this may be about the last time we go with her I might give her one more shot 
So the babies are all out running around now, so they're about ready to graduate out into the... Uh... Okay, Mr. Rooster. About ready to graduate out into the bigger areas. Grow out cages. Makes it much easier to uh, take care of out there. We're going to have very mild weather for the next week or so. I just put some feed out there for the chickens, and so they're uh, tearing it up. So I hope you enjoyed the uh, show. It's just a matter from this point, just growing out the uh, babies. Like I said, you uh, mate the females at about six weeks after she's had her babies and you separate her from her kids at uh, eight weeks. And then you just grow them basically another month for uh, uh, till their time to process. It's really not difficult. It does take time though. Uh, we go out there twice a day and check their water, give them some hay, and you gotta have a hose out there to be able to rinse the cages out. But rabbits are not terribly uh, difficult. There is an occasion if you do not keep things clean, if you don't, you know, change out their water and if you, you know, get their food gets contaminated with pee and urine, they can end up with uh, like a type of dysentery and it, uh, it'll kill the rabbits pretty quickly. But <clears throat> we seem to have very, very good luck with, uh, again, going out there twice a day and keeping things uh, clean. So the rabbits have been do doing very well. I'm probably, I think I'm in my third year now. I filled my freezer. In fact, let me throw a picture. Here's a picture of my uh, rabbit freezer. And each shelf holds nine bags, which each bag has two rabbits, six pounds each. And I have uh, four shelves and also some door space. But I had to take some space for some of my large chickens. You can see those chickens are seven pounds each. But anyways, they're a fantastic um, source of meat. It's a mixture between chicken and pork. Anyways, I hope everybody's treating you well. I hope you're doing well. Do the best you can. God bless. Mm -hmm.